I am about to do the first triathlon of my entire life, and I had not trained for it. <laughs> and I am 276 pounds. I signed up one during one of those bouts of motivation. Oh, I'll train for this. Get in better shape, lose some weight. This will be my end goal. That was probably in January sometime. Now, nine months later, I hadn't tra trained at all. I read a book. <laughs> I thought about training, but I hadn't actually trained. It's not as crazy as it sounds, despite being overweight, obese even. I am incredibly active. I take spin classes. I hike. In high school, I was a long-distance swimmer. The distance for the swim at the triathlon was 500 meters. 500 meters. That's a warm-up. I got this. On race day morning, I stand at the top of the hill looking down at the scene in Mission Bay. The sky is that weird grayish blue that happens right before the sun starts to rise. The parking lot is full of people, throngs of them standing around in swimsuits, moving like a fleshy mass between the rows of bikes. Their voices tangling into a cacophony of excitement. A loudspeaker booming over the noise, Racers, go to the body marking area. The body marking area. I set up my helmet and bike shorts trying to remember which order to lay down everything. In the body marking area, a punk rock girl with purple hair scribbles my number down my arm, over my knee, and then puts my age on my calf. Do you want to write my weight across my butt? She shook her head now. It's 6.30 a.m. and the first wave is about to start. These were the elite swimmers, the real athletes. The beach is chilly this early, but I didn't notice. I was more concentrating about the temperature of the water. Despite my confidence in, the, in my swimming ability, I didn't train in open water. Oh, well, I didn't train at all. <laughs> but I had never, ever swum laps in the ocean. I mean, I surfed a little, swam in the waves, but no actual lap swimming. I'm freaked out, but I brush the thoughts away. I know how to swim. Swimming is the only sport that I've ever been good at. Swimming is the least of my worries. I was in wave 15, almost the last wave of the race. If you're not familiar with triathlons, there's a category for people who weigh more than 150 pounds. So plus size women and men can race with their own kind. Actually, I love this idea. It, it encourages people who might feel uncomfortable racing in their age group to join the competition. It's usually called the Athena category. <laughs> Athena, Zeus's daughter, kick-ass war goddess and huntress, symbol of wisdom and strength. This triathlon also had this category, but instead of calling it the Athena category, they opted to use an alternate term. The Clydesdales. <laughs> Clydes Clydesdale, a 2,000-pound draft horse made famous by Budweiser commercials. It would be good to meet some of the people in my waves, so I go to the water's edge to find my equine friends. These bodies are sleek, svelte, women with broad shoulders that look more like warriors of Athena than mannequins at the Lane Bryant store. None of these people look like Clydesdales. Am I the only one? Are you in wave 15? A few nods. Are you kidding me? Where were my fellow fat girls? I was, by far, the fattest person at the triathlon. <laughs> the start was an in-water start, which means you actually begin the race in the water. I cannot communicate the coldness of the water. It's supposedly around 65 degrees, but it took my breath away. Okay, 
Listen to your body. Listen to your body. Get the hell out of the water immediately. I couldn't stick my face in the water. When I did, my body's reaction was to jerk it out, coughing and sputtering. The water was dark and murky. Goggles did me no good since I couldn't see my own limbs, let alone the people in the water near me. I'm not sure what I can do. This is scary. My body, my body is having a hard time recognizing, recognizing that this is going to be a swim. And damn it, body, you know how to swim. How am I going to do this? My stroke is slow and off. I have no pattern because half the time my face isn't in the water. Calm down. You know what to do. Finally, I start to get it. Finally, I start to get into a pattern, and bam! Someone kicks me in the face. I don't think I can do this. Maybe I should get out before I drown. Maybe I'm too fat to be a triathlete. Maybe I should have trained. It is an option to just pick up and leave. My husband is the only one that came to the race with me, and I know better than to tell people that I'm doing the race. If I chickened out, I don't want to explain myself. If I failed, I wanted it to be a private failure. Humiliation, party of one. I stopped in the water, ready to get out. I look at the shoreline to get my bearings. Holy crap, I'm halfway there. Halfway. That's like half more than I thought I was. Okay, I can do this. I might be slow. I might be uncoordinated, but my body's warmed up now, and I can finish this. I'll make a deal with you, Jessica. Finish the swim, and when you get out, you can quit. No hard feelings. I round the last marker and jump out of the water, running through the sand to the finish line. Wow. I did the swim. It was done. It was over. People are clapping and cheering. Okay, well, maybe I can do the bike ride. I mean, I like to bike, and it's just like 15K, and I'm soaking wet, and I need to get dry anyway. I might as well do it. The transition area is a massive activity. People are quickly changing their clothes, flying out on their bikes, coming in from the rides to go out on the run. Everyone's face is determined and intense. I feel athletic cool, even fast. I race out on the gates on my hybrid upright commuter bike, <laughs> which is as close as you can get to a beach cruiser and still have gears. <laughs> there are tons of people passing me, most of them on performance bikes with wheels that make that incredible whoosh, whoosh, whoosh sound and aerodynamic helmets and head-to-toe spandex. I'm wearing a tie-dye shirt. Fiesta Island is the halfway point. I pedal around the bay, turn into SeaWorld. It had to be just around the corner, right? Out of SeaWorld, more Mission Bay, more bay, more bay. Maybe I'm lost. Did I get lost in a race? Finally, finally, I'm on the island. Where are all the other racers? There is a guy who is definitely not a racer on a bike that has clearly defied the road closed due to race signs. He starts chatting with me. That's weird. Can't he see I'm racing? <laughs> then behind me, I hear a noise, a terrible noise. It's the cone truck. Picking up cones from the race behind me. Wow, I am the last person. I didn't think I would be the last person. The chatty stranger waves goodbye as I digest this latest blow to my ego. As he leaves, he calls out, good luck. You're brave. Brave. I get called brave a lot. I have a problem with this. 
Bravery is tied to facing enduring pain or danger. And when people call me brave, it's not because of these reasons. Usually what they're saying is, Jessica, you're so brave because you're prepared to let yourself look fat in front of God and all the world and do things that fat people are not supposed to do. I enter the transition area again and put my bike on the rack. I look around. No one is transitioning because they've already finished with the whole race. Lean muscle bodies are stretching and laughing with each other, going over aspects of the race while chowing down on power bars. No one is paying attention to the fat, red-faced girl trying to re-rack her bike. The fact that I'm still trying to race, trying to race is baffling, even to me. They're standing in the middle of the exit lanes in my way. I consider going home. Maybe I could just run out and then run around the block. Nobody would know if I skipped the run. I'd had planned to walk it anyway. The problem with calling me brave is that my willingness to put myself out there while fat is not bravery. That's like saying I have a willingness to breathe. And this is me. This is who I am, willing or not. And I have the stigma of being a fat girl whether I hide in the closet or do not and do nothing or and I would rather go out and do something. When I dig down to the heart of the matter, it's the reason I am there today. That day at the triathlon, I hear fat women all the time say they're going to do what they're going to do once they're in a normal size. That they're going to run a marathon or get on a dating website or they're going to take dance lessons or love themselves. That once they lose the weight, they're going to start really living life. What kind of life is that? A life on hold for a weight check. It's not just in these fat girls' heads. Society teaches us that you've got to be a certain size to follow your dreams. We judge a body size as a demonstration of that person's character. And we're uncomfortable with fat women in bikinis, fat women who dance, fat women who are athletic and dare to stand with the spelt athletes in spandex. And it's my job to make people feel uncomfortable. When it came down to it, I asked myself, who would judge a thin woman who didn't train and came in last in a triathlon? No one. I'm not sure anyone would call her brave. Stupid, maybe. <laughs> but not brave. The more annoyed I get in the transition area, the more I realize that, no, I'm going to finish this damn race. Sorry if I'm not fast enough for you, Mr. Triathlon with your $3,000 bike, your shaved, hairless, jerky legs. <laughs> Excuse me, I bark as I push through. I pick up my pace and I head out of the transition area. And I walk, and I walk, and there is no one left. Racers are loading up their bikes and went home with their families and spectators an hour ago. Too bad, I thought, I'm doing this. I hit mile marker one and I'm devastated. I thought I had walked at least two miles. When I do hit mile marker two, I hear someone say, Hi, Jessica, how are things? Um, good, thanks. This is Ben, one of the volunteers of the race, and he's radioing back to HQ my position so they can decide which parts of the course to pull up. Seriously? The truck wasn't embarrassing enough, and now you sent an escort? I start to think about the cost of the triathlon. I'm okay making them wait. <laughs> These are the longest three miles ever. When I cross the finish line, there are a few volunteers left who are cheering for me. I'm not elated like I thought I would be. I'm more the, yes, yes, I've finished, finally, go home, variety of excited. It takes a while to hit me. Wow, that was really, really hard, and I finished it. I was last. Somebody's got to be last. I'm okay with being last. I'm so glad my husband took pictures because I might not have believed that it was real. I really finished it. I swam. I biked. I ran. Okay, I walked. It was hard, but I finished 
and I kept on finishing them. I did one the next year. I've gotten family and friends to do them. I did one in another state. I've done them with training and no training. And when I tell people I do triathlons, there are the skeptics and sometimes cheerleaders. But I want people to see that there's a fat face that's going out there and doing these crazy things. And when someone says that they've always wanted to do one, I say, what are you afraid of? Too fat? Lack of training, freezing to death in the bay, a cone truck following you at three miles an hour to pick up the course, an escort that announces your progress because you're the last person in the race. Because, darling, I've been there, and if I can do it, what is stopping you? 